Hey, we are live. <laughs> Happy Monday, everybody. It is Leah and Ryan and Richard from the Pioneer Racing Pigeon Club of Ontario. We're back with Pigeon Chat. What are we talking about today? All about eggs. Take it away, Ryan. First of all, I want to eggs. say hello. Hello. Hey, everyone. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hey, everyone. Eggs. You know what? Who doesn't love eggs for breakfast? Eggs are good at lunch. Eggs are even good at dinner. And you know what, Leah? In breeding season, there is nothing better than seeing your pairs start to go down and lay eggs. Am I right, Richard? 100% right. 100% right. Remember, without eggs, we don't have babies. So today we're going to be talking about eggs. Pairs now with us are, are going down, going down good. We have some pairs a little ahead of others. Uh, I think we, we put an 18 pair together, uh, 14 of them are down. You see there's some hens that are still humping up. In what the, does that mean by hump? Humped up. Hump. That's a good question. What does it mean? Well, it's simple. So we looked at driving before. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So the cock was going to, he starts driving that hen. And for a newcomer, they think they got a crazy cock bird in the section. This guy's crazy. Well, no, he's doing that for a reason. We already talked to make her lose weight, to keep her moving, right? well, keep her moving. And uh, what is hum humping up, humping up, humping as up. we call it? It's like when a woman gets pregnant, as the baby gets closer, she gets bigger and bigger. The back of a hen, the, the slope and the back, you'll see there's a hump right over the back of the tail there. Just, just as about where the tail starts. Yeah, where the tail starts, the, right. the end of the body. You get the tail. A, a little hump there. A little hump, a hump. little, a little, almost like a little speed bump. You see it coming, yeah. it gets a little bigger. That's, right That's right. normally telling you hen is ready to lay. And another thing for people tuned in here today, this is a show of pigeon chat. We're trying to create more pigeon flyers, educating new pigeon uh, pigeon keepers too. Keepers, keepers flyers. Not not only flyers. People right. That, that want to start. That's they, right. They want to keep pigeons, and they, they all pigeons are the same. That's right. They all drive. They all hump up when they're going to lay eggs. They all build nests. And you'll see just as she's just before she's going to lay the eggs, a day or two before the cock will stop driving. He'll slow down. He'll slow right down. Right. So uh, again. The show guys put in your comments your questions be interactive remember this is for the new people the old people we can always learn we're always learning again if you like what we're doing go to our youtube channel feathers elite pigeon auctions hit that subscribe link is all we have to say on that hit it it's fun over a thousand videos now correct leah that's right we already have some comments and questions frank eichhorn says what came first the pigeon or the egg we're going to talk about that today, Frank, because Ryan's got a little trick to show everybody on how to tell if the eggs are clear or not. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, Tony is asking, Tony Sismanic, I hope I said that right. Um, how do you help an egg bound hen? Ooh, we talked about that uh, the other day. The other day. And there were some 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 good uh, good tips. Uh, I can't. You know, when it's in your head, you forget it. Well, I one of one of my answers was number one: is she an old hen? Okay. Number two: is she a hen that you have left with the cock, and she's been eggs, babies, eggs, babies, or you left it with the cock and you took the eggs and switched them, took the eggs and switched them, another. 14 days you got eggs again you switch them switch them you do that to a hen i'm saying 10 times and her insides are done they're in trouble okay so that could be the situation the other situation we talked about was the egg could be very or the hen could be very very much too heavy way too heavy you know you're giving her too much feed she doesn't have a lot of exercise she's so overweighted and it doesn't matter if the cockbird drives her for two weeks to try and make her lose that weight, if she's so heavy, you might have trouble. Yeah, and especially even if the cock's not a big driver, then you're even in more trouble. Well, that's it. You see some cocks are not dominating. You see some cocks that drive hens. Basically, you'll be in the loft, and we've said it. You watch the cock drive, Leah, or, or people watching, and you go, oh, my God, we got to stop this guy. He is just, he's pushing. He won't let her eat, won't let her drink. Push, push, pull the head. Pull the feathers on the head. Push, push, push. 
driving some, her. It depends on some of the uh, the racing strains. No, but I think, uh, some, okay. Some so cocks are, but, but this fellow here asked, and, and Dave uh, Ottaway said, uh, get a little bit of, uh, I think he said, a little oil, Vaseline, Vaseline or oil, uh, baby oil on a Q-tip and right at the vent at the back, just inside the it, ring, go very gently in there and, and try and give a little bit of lubrication for, for it to come out. I've never done that. And when I get a hen that doesn't want to drop eggs, I, um, we, we really haven't had too much of that problem. Well, I've never, I, I had the problem once, uh, years ago, years and years ago, mm -hmm. I bought a, a pigeon, a hen, an expensive bird. And I thought, I'm going to get as many young ones out of her as I can. I put her to the cock and I let her drop, 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 drop eggs. By November, she was, her back end was swell right up, egg, egg bound couldn't come out I, I totally uh, have to say my mistake you ruined I, I was I ruined her right so what, ha what I ruined happened her. what happened well the bird ended up dying yeah so uh, sometimes if you get a hen that's flowing too much so uh you, you send her to I mean I had my hen there that one hen she flew 21,000 miles in races alone forget about training forget about law flying and when she got uh, ha a little, almost halfway through her race career, uh, she couldn't lay anymore. She got humped. She she went and sat in the basket in the nest box. She was looking like I gotta lay an egg, and I could see it. She, she her system wanted her to lay, but she couldn't. So what I do is I give I take an egg from someone else, and I put it in the nest box. She go sit on it. She went back to normal. The, Everything went the back inside to normal. Would relax. And she flew up to seven years. And, and I remember that hen. When he would give her an egg, he used common sense. Mm -hmm. He gave her an egg that was freshly laid. So he would give her the egg, give her the second egg. She'd sit on it. The insides would calm down. And the hen then would do the full sit on them, hatch them, pump them, feed them. And it would save the egg. It saved the hen. If you gave her an egg, and she's back to normal. Take the egg and throw it out. What's going to happen again? Oh no! All of a sudden, again, she's going to go, the, her and the cock are going to get back into that system or cycle to lay eggs again, and she can't lay. Remember, and I think what happened was she had so much flying. It's like gymnastics. They say that women, that from young girls, if they they overdo their gymnastics and they reach such a level, that. It, it can sometimes ruin their insides. Right. Everything's, you know, shook up. But that particular hen, she flew long lock four times. That's which 600 was, miles. Uh, well, 535. Oh, sorry. Well, we'll round off. And she flew Kenora once, which was 850 air miles to, to my place, plus all the races before. I mean, I'm not going to name them because we're going to be here for an hour and a half. A lot of miles, guys. But that, that's what so can happen. That, that's what can happen. Now, if anybody else has suggestions on uh, to help um, answer Tony's question, how do you help an egg-bound hen? Um, Richard, also known as my dad. Uh, my dad said uh, the Vaseline um, in around the, Vaseline, uh, the Dave ring. Ottaway, Dave Ottaway says around her vet, get a right. Q-tip. I think he said baby oil and give a little swabbing in there and, and it, hopefully it'll help her out. Another fella said... Give her something to drink. Uh, or something. Liquid, liquid, calcium. Liquid, liquid calcium. Liquid calcium. <laughs> liquid calcium. Yeah. And and again, again, hey, hold on. Do you want to help your hens? Do you want to help your cocks? Do you want to help your young ones? Do you want to help your pigeon? Give them the proper grits, and minerals, and vitamins. Versalaga, we sell it here at the Coop. A great product, all in one. I'm going to tell you when you're done this, I want you to go on to Versalaga and type up all in one and look what's in that pail that they sell. There's 60 or 70 items. There's all types of things. There's calcium in there. There's everything. Guys, the other question I'm going to ask Tony is just ask him. You just, you just what, cut me, right? What, yeah, sorry. What kind of section is she in? Is she in a little wee cage where she can't flop her wings? She can't move? Ah, you know, you're restricting hey, hey, the, the... You know what? Right. We, we just talked about Aaliyah before the show. Miss San Diego and the Seagull, they're in their section, eh? 
It's a nice section. It's 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 uh, six feet tall, four feet deep, four and a half feet wide. Tomorrow, I'm going to allow her. She looks like she's ready to go, ready to lay. I'm going to let her go out in the hallway. You know, a a, a twenty foot long hallway with a with wire in the front. I'm going to let her and her cock go out, and I'm just going to let them go up and down, and just uh, exercise a little bit more, just to get her moving a little bit more. That's what I'm going to do. Well, you know, that section that she, they're in. is a nice moving section. Perfect. Hey, it's a perfect section. They can but fly you know, out. I've got, I've got okay. comments and questions lining up here, so we're going to uh, okay. get to it here. Um, I'm going to post uh. this. I'm not sure if this is a legit question, but I'm going to post it anyway. Mike Vandriak is asking, can you sex eggs? Well, I can't do it. No, you know what? Maybe somebody can. I can't do it. I heard that. I don't know if it's true, but they say, you know how you get pairs in the nest, mm -hmm. a pair of cocks or a pair of hens. Mm -hmm. I heard that if the hen turns the eggs a certain way, right. yeah, it changes this. the sex, can change the sexes in the egg. I well, don't on, know. That, on that note, Ricky Cruz <clears throat> says, I've always heard the first egg is always the cock bird. Is that true? I haven't got a clue. I don't know. Uh, here's something for you people. I, you know what we I, should do? I, I've had it. You know what we should do? When the eggs come, uh, we've been around for a while, <laughs> but we can't answer that question. <laughs> so mark the egg. Yeah. And then and watch when it hatches. Egg one, egg ah, two. And when on. it hatches, Rick, because Ricky, they're in the nest this you know big. What? You know what, though? You got you to gotta mark the baby. Hold on. You know what's good? Ricky, Ricky Grews and his family there, he's got three small boys are in the, in the game. They're starting to raise eggs and, and babies. <laughs> And youngsters, that's a good thing for you guys to try out. See how it works. See what you, what you find out. Another thing, I'm going to throw this one to, to to Ricky here. Yeah. When you get a hen, a young hen, lays an egg with blood on it. Are you nervous? Are you worried? We already spoke about it before. A young hen, that's normal. Her, usually her first egg has blood on it. All right. So, right. Well, hey, so I'm we just talk, we out talk, Yeah, we talked about that a, a few episodes ago. Yeah. Um, Ken yeah. Lavoy says a squirt of mineral oil. Yes, that's what it was. Mineral oil. Okay, mineral oil. Yeah. Okay, so try that. A little squirt. So how do you squirt that in? You uh, put it in a syringe, I guess. A little syringe, or or oh. what do you do? Okay, so we'll we'll let uh, Ken uh, respond to that because we got a little bit of a okay. delay. But Ian Sybil says if she's egg bound. Um, hold on a second. My comment just jumped. Okay, if she's egg egg bound. Uh, put a pot of water on the stove, heat it up, and the steam will make the egg-bound hen drop the egg. Don't burn her, though. Huh. Okay, so so I, I, I think what Ian's saying is you get the kettle going, you hold the hen up so she's in the steam. Ian, good question. I've never heard of this. It sounds interesting. How long will it take? How long do you got to hold that hen over? Because when you're holding the hen, are you not making her uneasy? Do you massage her? What do you do? You just hold her over it. She's going to drop it. How long does it take? But that's a good one. Okay. Very so and Tony now is responding back because I think that you asked the question, like what kind of a section, what the situation is with this hen. So um, Tony yeah. says it's a large hen, individual breeding cage, raising first set of babies and is having trouble laying second round. I can't cut feed since they're feeding babies. Oh, she she's later. She has young ones on the first round. Yeah, she, right. She's, and now she's going to lay the second round. I wonder Ooh. how much time in between, because Dad, I think you had talked about that before we went on the show. Um, yeah, but if it's no, it, it'll be normal. The first round go down. Okay. And then the second round, well, once once it's time in the in the cycle, uh, the, the second round, the mm -hmm. cock will start going after her around what. The, the, 15 day mark. Yeah, maybe and start maybe moving at 20 day mark. Yeah. And 12 days and up, he starts to go. He starts to fool around. And so that's the hens. It's normal. Maybe she's, uh, geez. <laughs> hey, if people are listening and you've had that happen to you, what did you notice? I've never. I've had, I'll, I'll tell you. So I've had birds 60 years on my own, uh, be May, mm -hmm. 60 years. And in that total time, it hasn't I either. bet you I've had only two hens that in 60 years that had this problem. Uh, so I, I, you know, it's it's like the problem is for me, 60 years is so 
minimal. And in the one hand that I bought, I just kept pumping eggs out of her, hoping to yeah. win, win the World Series with young ones. <laughs> and I and I literally well ruined her. The other hand, I can't even remember when it was. I'm saying I got maybe two. Right. So, so, so you know what? This is interesting to see uh, again. Uh, hopefully, Ian responds back because maybe this will help. Yeah, uh, we, well, we had a few. See if he's answered back yet. Okay, so uh, he did answer back, and he says. Uh, Split her legs, and the steam will make her drop it in about 10 minutes, and it won't ruin her. It really works. Okay. There you go. So I think what the steam does, it heats up. Relaxes. Uh, uh, and But expands. Relaxes and stretches. And, and yeah, because you know what heat does? Yeah. Heat makes things expand. Right. So it's probably, that's what it does. It expands the... the the, uh, the, uh, the whatever the tube is that the A comes out. Right. And, and guys, I'm probably, because I know Ian, probably when you do it and you're steaming the hen, again, use your hands. You got the legs open. Your steam's over. So you want your hands to, then you, if you can take that heat, normally the hen should be able to take it. So take keep it. your hands there. Take her as, Ian would probably say, as warm as you can take her, I think is good. Well, and, and when your hands are over there and you get to the five minute mark, you start waiting. If you get to 10 minutes, probably by if it hasn't happened in 15, you know, if, if I could say something, a man's body heat mm -hmm. is what, 98.6 or something? Yep. Okay. Uh, a pigeon's body heat is 107 degrees, right? Okay. So, I, okay, I got a hot tub, it's 104 degrees. When I just jump in that hot tub, man, whew, she's hot. It's like when mom said on Sunday night, I had to have a bath when get I was eight there. years old. She ran the water and she but, said, get in but, that tub. But, yeah, so but what I'm you... saying is the pigeon's body temperature, 107 degrees. If you feel it well, quite warm on your hands, like Ian said, quite warm, she can take quite a little bit more because right. we're, we're talking nine degrees difference in body temperatures. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Well, that's right. Okay. Move on, Liam. Um, okay. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm looking, there's a lot of comments, and I just, I'm just uh, sort of jumping around a bit. So um, Ian then says, uh, moisten her tunnel up, and it expands everything. Okay. So, Tony, there's a, there's a few couple, a few suggestions. The steam is a suggestion. The Vaseline or the baby oil or whatever baby you oil. said. Mineral oil. Uh, Mineral oil is another suggestion. You know, liquid calcium. Liquid uh, calcium I, I would like, is a suggestion. Exercise, perhaps, might be like Ryan said. I don't know, a little bit of a suggestion. Try those. But things wait out. a minute. Exercise no. at this point for no, her okay, well, when not, she's egg bound. Don't give her exercise. Not not the well, egg bound right. part. Prior to right. Yeah. So there's okay. there's Go a few on. suggestions. We're going to move on because I'm not going to spend an hour on. The one topic because I have a lot of other comments, so we're just going to try and yeah. okay. get to the old point Roll here on, and then move on. Um, okay, so uh, Ken Lavoy says um, with a syringe in the mouth with the uh, mineral, right? The mineral, mineral oils, mineral oil. mineral probably the same oil. same with the liquid calcium in the mouth to take it in. Okay. Okay. Good so tip. hopefully that helps, Tony. Let us know. Down the road on our next show. I got, an, I got another another story. Just oh, it's okay. We're then. not doing a story right now. Okay, Sorry. Mike Vanderyak asks, um, how many nests have two cocks? How many two hens? And how many one hen and one cock? Well, this is going to be a project that Ricky Cruz and his boys are going to do throughout breeding season. We've assigned Ricky Cruz <laughs> and his boys the job of marking the, the, the eggs, and then when the babies, and then they're going to give us a full report as to who, what, where, when, and how and that works. I think what Mike said, that's a good question. And I think uh, Mike probably raises 60 young ones a year, mm -hmm. let's say, 40 to 60. Mm -hmm. And I know with myself, if I raise 60 young ones, I might get one or two pair at the most, where I got a pair of cocks or a pair, or a pair of hens. And, I, and usually when they come out, if it's a pair of cocks, you'll always see one cock bird will, was supposed to be the cock in the nest, and the other cock bird was supposed to be a hen, but he turned out to be a cock. You'll see the difference in the, and the sizes the size. and everything. Yeah. And, and another thing I do find, 
I find in the summer, if you leave your pairs together, you get tend to get more hens or more cocks in nests. I do notice that as well. Do you notice that? I notice that. Yeah. I do. See, he didn't notice it, but I, I pay attention to this stuff. So, and you know what? Ricky Cruz, you're doing this study, if you don't mind. Mike, study along. Let's hear. Let's hear what happens with, with, with yours. It's, it's good to find out. Well, how many does Mike get in the... Well, we're, Mike's going to do the study as well. We have two people. Remember, you can't fail this class. This we're is all just learning fun. together. Uh, <laughs> Anbar, <laughs> Anbar Lov says, nice necklaces, guys. We're going to talk about the necklaces at the end of the show. Um, yep. It's No, it's not Mardi Gras, we're, but we're going to talk about that at the end of the show. Okay. Anybody else have questions? Put them in the comments below. We have some videos to show because we're talking all about eggs. Which video would, would you like to show first, Ryan? Leah, give the clip 6718B. That's the egg clip. Hit that one up for us first. <laughs> the you guys, checking we if it's clear or not? Yep. Yep. Go ahead. Let me find it. Hold on. Where the heck is it? Which and one again, is it? Again, guys. Though? If you're enjoying our show, go over to our YouTube channel, Feathers Elite Pigeon Auctions. Hit the subscribe link again right now on Feathers Elite Pigeon Auctions, our auction site. Fantastic. We have some of the very best out there. Again, Dan Gagork, Thunder Bay, Ontario, the one lock wizard. He's been winning for years and years and years. Super nice pigeons. Homegrown Canadian I'm talent. I'm sorry. I'm trying to find the one with the egg and I don't know which clip it is. I have all the clips here, but they all kind of look the same. So I'm just going to play one and hopefully it's. Let's see. One. Let's see what it is. I'm going to put it up uh, before I put it up. Uh, Mike Vandriak says I went back over 20 years of records, 25% two hens, 25% two cocks and 50% one of each. Hmm. 25%. So yeah, that over how many? See, I told you, Mike would be on this. He's on it. Good job, Mike. And and, and... all right. Well, it is what it is. He did. He did the. He did the research. I'm not going to argue it. Like okay, to I'm going to play a clip. I'm not sure if this is the right clip, but we're just going to go with it. Okay, here we go. Uh, all right, Leah, go with it. A clip. I can tell you if it is right off the start. If it's no, I just change it. I can do that if you want. Okay, we'll just, just let it go. Here we go. Technology okay. tech. Here we go. Go on, tech. Hey guys, we're checking out. The bulls. Let's check this out. We've got our <laughs> uh, tangerine crate. Look at how nice, big, full the nest is. Hen looks good, eh, mama? You got nice eggs? Yeah, you do, mama. We got our just our regular bowl. Nice and dry underneath. Bowl's nice. No nest pad, no nothing. They did what they wanted to do. Okay, now we got the paper bowl. This is a fresh pair. Look at the small egg this little hen laid. Not the nicest egg. Let's see how it's looking. They're kind of starting to rip the paper off a little bit. Maybe I could have used more. Paper feels nice and dry, so that's good. So let's see how the paper's gonna work. And again, we got another paper bowl. Again, you're starting to see some of the paper ripping. So let's see how this works. Oh, and again, Let's not be afraid. Let's see. Do we have any here? We got our hen on, on the teepee. Bowls and how they're constructed. <clears throat> okay, so obviously that was the wrong one. But that gives you a little shot in our breeding barn and how the laying the nest bowls, how everything's going. Right, Ryan? Yeah, bulls, bulls are going good. The, the pairs are making some good nests. I have another clip there of a hen that's gone wild, making basically what we call a king-size bed, or like Ricky says, an eagle's nest. And sometimes when you see an eagle's nest, you could be into trouble. It's to kind of help her out. You, gotta, you, got, you know what? You're going to show that. You're going to show that in a video. You're going to be like Mother you know, Nature. One thing I did notice there, which I liked, mm -hmm. uh, the bird with the tangerine crate, mm -hmm. you, uh, you, you took and showed people the tangerine crate, and the hen stayed on the nest. Oh yeah, she loves and, that. And did you see how the hen was starting to grunt at you a yeah. bit? That I like to see. I don't like to see a hen just exit as fast as she can. Like look at her and she exits. I like to see that hen wanting to stay on on there and protect yeah. it. Nothing, Grounds that's to the something nest. That's something good to see. Grounds to, to the see. nest, yes. You opened up the, te the, te the teepee there. The hen didn't move. The, the hen stayed on the nest. Okay, like moving on, that. Phil has a question, uh, and he says, even better, how many times does the son look like a father and daughter? 
how many times does the son look like the father and daughter like the mother? He's seen them switch a bunch of times. Switch. So how many times does the son look like again? the father and the daughter like the mother? And well, I, seen him switch believe, a, couple, a bunch of times. Believe it, believe it or not, if you, I mean, again, I'm not getting into the color wheel, but if you put a, you know, a red and a blue together, normally, if the red is a cock, the father is a cock. When the babies come out, the red is the hen. They switch. The colors normally switch, but I mean, you the, the, the hen takes the color of the father. Yeah, and I think but, I think you'll but, see it in the facial yeah, as well. If you put two blue bars together, then you know oh. uh, whatever. But uh, you know what I find? But I can recognize different pairs. I can recognize yeah. their young ones. Yeah, I can. Uh, I can. I can. I can see it. It's, yeah, you yeah. see the faces of the father mm. sometimes, and it switches. I mean, I don't get into looking how much they switch and switch and switch, but. You, we can look and say, you'll see a young bird that we've got. It's four months old. And you go, boy, that looks like it's out of the seagull. And, and, and all of a sudden, you'll, you'll check the band and go, shit, man, we're right on with that one. Thank you. know, good. Um, but uh, did you want to hit another clip, Leah? Try and hit the next one for the egg one. Um, hold on. I've got another question. Um, okay. Sam, Sam says, I've heard of narrow pointy eggs being males and round eggs being females. True or false? What have you guys found? When I get a round pointy egg, like it, uh, like you mean, like football, a little bit football shaped, maybe a little, a little more. Uh, yeah, a little bit. But I mean, if it's too. Uh, the, the the problem with the study it is is when the babies are hatched out. If you're not there to see exactly, you know, I, I it, it's hard. And then the babies come out. They're small. What are we gonna do? Mark the baby for. You know what? I let it go. You know what? <laughs> uh, odd shaped eggs. I don't really like them. No, I don't like small eggs. I don't small eggs, like you say, the young hen sometimes yeah. lays. If she's a little bit too young, she lays that small little egg at first. It almost looks like a sparrow egg or yeah. a dove egg or something. That, it's not right. The egg should be nice and smooth. Yep. It should have a like a nice texture to it. Not not uh, rough and, and, and not rough. Normally those eggs are no good. You just you know, get rid of them. Get rid of them. You want a nice nice good egg. You can have blood on it. It's fine. Smooth egg, nice large eggs, good, good, good. Okay, let's move on here. Move on, Leah. Okay, I'm trying to find the video. It's just difficult when they're they all look the same. So <laughs> I'm going to show the video of the the hen that made the crazy looking Yeah, Eagle's Nest. The Eagle's Nest. I'm gonna the, show the, that. The, the, yeah. Okay, I'm going to show that right now, okay? Just a minute, please. Tips when looking at nests. Look at some of the nests. Some build them big. Some build them not so big. What? Just because it's... Some uh, stock them. Oh. Mountains. This way. Look. <clears throat> some don't build very good nests. That's okay. Look at the newspaper nest. Look at how it's going. Good. Now, here's a problem nest. You can already see it. This nest is almost too big. They've made like a, uh, what do you want to call it? They've made a, a uh, like a king size bed. So this nest is so big with sticks and twigs. This nest can be over in a day, the egg can be out. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna just put Put a nice brick in there. She okay. that I'm going to use another brick over here. Okay, I'm going to pull the egg. Put it on the ground for a second. Let's just get it adjusted a little bit. Get the egg in there. Put my hand. Get it in. Pack your hand down a little bit. This hen and cock, they made a beautiful bed. We're using the bricks to hold her together. There you go. Pop <laughs> your egg in. This way, the hen can't push the material out. It's up, it's secure. She's gonna sit on her egg. It's nice, it's tight and secure. There we go. There you go. It, fixing the nest there. I mean, if not, you could already see she come out there. She came out of the nest. You can see she pulls some of the nest with her. The next thing you know, another cock was in or something like that happens. She'll Eventually the eggs will come out. You can see it, it was, it was gonna happen. So two little bricks, it works. So you know what happens now in the future is she's going to have a pair of nice, healthy young ones. Mm -hmm. And when they're in the nest, mm -hmm. the young ones, to do their little dropping, 
they back up a little bit mm -hmm. out of the nest mm -hmm. and they go boop and the other one goes boop next thing you know you got 25 droppings that are nice and solid and hard next thing you know they get a little bit of pack down in there and it makes a bowl a natural bowl i'd have to say homemade with with weeds twigs and it makes it a homemade bowl makes a homemade and, bowl and that's where you just leave it yep that's where i leave my nest it's the best best nest good nest it okay, is a good get nest. in there and start cleaning it out and clean it out then she has to do it all over again and you got this big problem again you know what Ant Barloff says, I got a tip from you guys about putting one nest bowl higher than the other, so I made some blocks for the bowls. Perfect. Let us know how that is working out for you. That's great. Good job. Good job. Go. Okay, so a question from Randy Nurkel asking, does the health of youngsters deteriorate with multiple rounds? Do strained parents uh, contribute to health issues in youngsters? Again, before you start breeding, you want to get your birds as healthy as possible, get them through the molt. We've talked about this, but you're always wanting to give those breeders the most, the, the grits and the minerals and, and the good feed and the vitamins in the water and keep that going. It helps for the next rounds. Now, as I'm saying this, I know Richard's cringing mm -hmm. because one thing we've learned is if you want to get better rounds and your hens and your cocks to go better, You've got to wean earlier. The earlier you wean, take those youngsters away from the parents at a reasonable time, you save on the parents having to pump those babies because babies, they get lazy. They say, oh, I'm not going to leave. Wait, you got to feed me. Hold on. It's like, look at people, right? It's the same thing. The people stay together, the kids stay in the house, the kids are 40 years old, they're still living at home. You can take the youngsters away at 14, 16 days old. They're ready to go. Like I said before, let if the youngsters can watch the parents eating, and if, you have, if they can watch parents or the group eating, they learn right away. They learn right away. Take them away at that age. It, it gets them on their own. They can survive no problem. You know how much work it is. To feed a young one that's three weeks old, 21 days old. How to, hard? How hard is it go, at 25 go. days? How and, hard is it at 30 days? Well, that's what I'm, now, and, and you know what? We're showing everything that you, we're showing you here. You can be saying to us, <laughs> "They want me to take the babies away at 14, 16, 18, 20 days old." That's crazy. These these people don't know what they're right. talking about. No, nope. that's what they're saying. But you know what? We're not going to tell you it, are we, Leah? No. We're going to wean the babies at 16 days old. Or we're going to wean them on the show. And you know what? We're going to show you the videos of how we wean them. How we wean them. It, it works for us. We've had no problems with it. And you know what? You save on your pairs. If you leave those babies for, for an extra 10 days, from 16 days to, to 28 days, 26, 26 days, 28 days, 30 days, you're making those breeders work. I've, work. I've seen work. I've seen people that have young ones still in the nest, in the in in the section with the old birds. They're uh, what, forty two days old. They're six weeks old. The young one. They're feeding their birds. The young ones are on the floor with their wings open, squeaking, <laughs> chasing after the parent. <laughs> they can't. They don't know how to eat. Because they wait for parents to feed them. Well, get if that little kid can get on that bicycle at two years old and he can chew his own food, why should mama keep chewing the food for him and putting it in his mouth and let him get on that bicycle and learn to ride it? Why, See, why wait till he's 16 years old? You know what I mean? And I, let's say Wayne Gretzky got the hockey stick when he was two years old. We're gonna dedicate. You know, we're gonna dedicate an entire show. Like we're gonna once we get to that stage, we're gonna dedicate entire shows to weaning and how to wean. And but right now we're talking about eggs. And I found mm -hmm. the clip where you showed Ryan how to check for clear if the eggs are clear or not. Or right? Yep. So go I'm ahead. Play, I'll play that now. All Hopefully right, enjoy, this is guys. the right clip. Here we go. Yep. Hey guys, we're checking on how the breeding is going. Eggs are down all over, which is a great sign. Tip with eggs. 
This pair just laid a fresh pair of eggs. First egg today. I'm gonna show you something. How do I know if it's good? Never shake your egg. Fresh egg. New people will say, it's clear. There's nothing in it. When you hold it up to the light and you look behind it, you can see through it. This egg is clear, it's no good. For you new people, it's no good. There's nothing in it. Oh, it's a bad egg. You are wrong. That's a fresh egg. In three to four days, five days, seven days, you should see life in your egg. We are going to check a pair that's about three days ahead. Okay? Three days ahead. Here we go. Oh, you see the baby? And they call this candling the egg. You see the egg is nice, it's getting full. You see that little silhouette there of the baby right there? See the darkness? So one egg is good. Good job, mama. Let's check the second egg. Ooh. There it is, the second egg is good. You see the baby in it? You see the shadow in the egg? You'll see the veins and then all of a sudden the, the egg will fill up completely and she's ready to hatch. Checking eggs, don't look at them till they're over five days <clears throat> old. There we go. There you go. There's one thing that I wanted to just, say. Just is, don't drop your eggs. Just that once that egg fills, mm -hmm. with the young youngster will be in there, mm -hmm. you will see at one end of the egg, mm -hmm. there'll be an air pocket, a small air pocket. Mm -hmm. One thing you forgot to mention, okay? So you know what I'm saying? Yes, Richard. Okay, there'll be that air pocket in there, we call it, right. and uh, away we go. She's uh, She'll start chipping and... Uh, Here's, yeah, here's, fun. A, now, here's a tip, guys. Don't bother the birds every day with the eggs and checking them and checking them and checking them. Because you know what you're going to do? We call it. You check them to death and they don't hatch. Check them once. So you don't even check some of them a lot of times. You just look, bang, they drop them today. All of a sudden, the old time goes by in 18 well, days that they were hatching out. A lot of times if I do look, I'll look in the nest. I can see how dark they are. I can I can see the, 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 the color. They, they go from a, from a real white almost a darkish kind of a color you right. could see it right, right. you know but i think ryan you you made the good analogy it's like a planting a grass seed or planting a seed of a flower uh once you plant the seed and you cover it and you give it some water it's going to take a week at least until you're going to start to see anything sprout so right. you have to kind of think of it in that perspective right like it yeah. takes it takes a week for things to get going, right? Yeah, yeah it, it, take, it takes time. We had a new flyer called us up. He was all whole. He was all over the spot. He was all over the place. Mm -hmm. What happened? I got eggs. They're no good. They're no good. Well, when did they lay them? They laid them tonight. They're all clear. Yesterday, they're clear. They're not clear. Give it some time. They Common develop. sense, guys. They got to develop. They have to develop. Take your time. You can you can use the light your light if you want to check them. You could take a small flashlight, mm -hmm. like one of those small pencil lights, put it up around the egg. Yeah, behind or, the egg, behind yeah. the egg like that, behind it. Right. Put the light right through. You see it as clear as day. It's nice. Yep. Or if you don't have that, you can hold them up to the sun a different a certain way. You got to hold them to to create the I don't know if it's like a shadow and it comes through. You could see that that way, right? But you what know. you're saying also is don't be going in there once she lays the egg and you see, oh, look, she's got an egg. Don't be going in there every single day and checking. Like, wait five days and then check. Correct? Well, I, I think you give, yourself bad luck. Yeah, you give yourself bad luck. Enjoy it. Let the hen. She knows what she's doing. You know what? You check them at uh, eight days old. You no, know, look, bang, bang. They're both good. Great. That's it. Perfect. Let it go, and you, you're going to see around the 18th day, those eggs start to chip. Bang. Now, not, not you know to what? get back to the weaning, but I just wanted to post this comment because I think this is exactly the reason why we are doing these shows. Owen Cleveley, um says, I didn't know you had to take them at that age, take them out to wean them. He didn't even know you had to wean them. So 
See, this is a very, this is a new flyer. He's a younger, uh, a younger gentleman who's getting into it and getting excited about pigeon racing. And he didn't, he doesn't know the steps of the weaning and how, how, and I'm sure there's a lot of people in the same boat that just were not quite sure exactly how this whole process works. And that is why we do these shows for everybody to learn along together. So thank you I also, for that. Thank you for that. Right. I just want to comment uh, on when I wean them young, they're able to survive clearly on their own i have to show them where the water i dunk their heads a couple times in the water to show them the water yeah and <laughs> and uh, they they pick up very nicely if you know we do it in a basket but if you wanted to put them in a section with a couple hens right. that are, are are not mated the, the hens will go and eat okay uh, uh again uh it, what it does as well uh, for racing pigeon people it creates more of a bond with you and the young one. You took it away from the parents. Now you showed this young one the water. You show them the feed. You, you pick up your young ones, handle them every day, and it creates that more of a bond between you and the youngster and as it uh, goes on in life. Here's, here's another thing, Owen. Um, it's great that you're getting into the sport. It's great you have a lot of great questions. That's awesome. Keep following along. You're going to watch us wean the babies at the 16, at the 20-day mark. You're going to watch how we do it, and you can follow along when you have your youngsters, and you sort of just do what we do if you have questions, because we're going to have a show all about weaning. So don't panic. You're not there. I already know you got some eggs, which is great. Follow along. But again, when we wean the youngsters, we make sure we're looking. When we wean them, we're always looking. We're always looking. We're The section we wean them. Our eyes are on them to see, hey, who's falling off? Who can't handle it? This way, that way, we are looking. We don't just wean them and walk away. No. No. It also shows signs of intelligence. Yes. So you wean 20 young ones, or let's say 10, and you'll look and say, put the feed down. See that blue pie? He's right there. See this one? He's right there. That one's right there. That one's right there. When they see me, they look at me. They come to me. Maybe you got one or two that sit back all the time. Right. Or then, sort of gives or, you an indication. Or then again, you have the odd one that just hollers, runs around the other ones, looks at you going, he, mama, 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 mama. You know what? I don't like those whiners. Not using the shit between the ears. That's what we want to see with racing pigeons. Fancy uh, pigeons is a little different. Talking just one more thing about the weaning. <laughs> Randy has a question. Uh, what is the difference of early weaned birds and later weaned birds? Well, we just told Young, you. Younger or older. Well, no, I, I, I want to take the strain off the parents. They don't. I mean, a young one that's 14 days, 16 days old, his head is the same size as his, his parent. It is. Maybe his waddle's not as big, but his head is the same. That means the brain is, is almost cool. the same. And if you give him a chance, you give him a chance to watch parents eat, he'll know already at that age, I know what's going on here. His brain is ready to go. Okay? You take the stress off the parents, you give them their uh, all grit, mm -hmm. you give them their minerals, you give them good feed, show them the water, they pick it, pick it up. What's the difference? Uh, I don't like to leave them babies and you let them become suck holes. You want to know what? You want to know what the, what the benefit is? You get the kids riding the bike faster, you save your breeders, and you get to, you get to look to see which one of those babies stands out to you and says, boy, look at that one. It picked it up like nothing. One of the best things i ever seen. You don't mean ride the bike faster. You mean ride the bike sooner. Ride the bike sooner. The yeah. best things i ever seen. Look at kids that go to Montessori schools. i seen children six years old already doing speeches in a Montessori school. They have a mixed classroom, different age kids. Everyone's working together. You go to the same classroom in a public school or whatever, you know what? The kids are still picking their noses and, and playing in the... So and, me and all the just, they're, just, they're teaching them quicker. Teach the pigeon to be... Be a pigeon. Think quick. Boom. That's what I like. That's yeah. what we like. And it works. I'm getting... Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. Good answer. Uh, Phil says getting back to uh, the checking if the eggs are clear or not. What he does is uh, you can usually look into the nest and see the eggs darken after about a week. 
Um, he doesn't pick them up and do the candling. That's how he he he's done this a while, obviously, and yeah. he's got the patience. And he just says, you know what? Okay, she's laid. Laid. I'm gonna go and check in a week and see. And that's exactly the way. right. Yep, that, that's because great. And, and you, but you're not. You don't normally like. You're not running around there, the loft every day, checking in the light to see how they are. Are you? No, I don't think no, you no. are. No, I, 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 I'm just sh showing that for new people so they're not throwing out their eggs. If they want to go and check them, like we say. We can look in the nest. Normally, you look and say, "Yeah, you look at how nice and dark those eggs are." You, you know when I really check them is when I have a 14-year-old cockbird, right? <laughs> He's made it up to a hen, a young hen, mm -hmm. and I want to see if he still has it, right? Right? If he's fertilizing those eggs, or if I get an old hen, yeah. she's 10, 11, 12 years old, and I, so I look, I go, "Okay, the 14-year-old cock. Sometimes one egg will be clear." One egg will be uh, good. Mm -hmm. Next nest, two eggs will be blank, right? Clear. They'll, they'll be clear. So I, uh, that's usually when I check those eggs. The other thing too is very important to to moisten the eggs. Have have a bath pan out there if you can to try and moisten the eggs. Um, we're, hold on, uh, we're going to show speaking, another. We got a clip here. Speaking. Oh, okay. First of all, let's explain why is it important that the eggs stay moist why is that important for people who don't know because it softens the shell when the young ones go to hatch it's good uh, we don't say put the eggs in a tub of water and keep them soaked no just moisten the egg but uh, in the wild a wild bird a pigeon whatever a duck will go in the puddle have a little bath Go yeah. and sit on the eggs, mm -hmm. and that's just a little bit of moisture on those eggs. Or, or a pigeon will walk in the grass, get a little bit of dew on the chest, on, and then go back on, back the, on the eggs. And, yeah. and Leah, you got a you got a great clip here. This is a, an award winning clip. So go there's ahead. there's uh, different methods <laughs> to moisten eggs. This is the way that Brian and Richard moisten the eggs. We're going to talk after this video clip of other ways, but this is the way that these guys do it. Okay, so here we go. One of the ways. Hey guys, ways. tip. You want to make sure your pears can keep their eggs moist. If they can't go out into an aviary, like the one I have behind me, rub up in the snow, have a bath, get in the rainwater, etc. Good tip is to moisten your eggs. Now, hey, you moist them with a little moistening gun a little bit of work we've done this for years great way to moisten your egg before hatching week before a couple times moisten your egg very simple look at that you check the egg out see the pair one egg quick moisten bing bang boom simple give them baths is great spray them if you want them you gotta have a spray gun or just pop them in your mouth and there Again, we go oh, oh, hold on yeah. now i learned that from you so if i take any slack from this it worked if you know what it works good we don't moisten all the eggs because we have the nice big avery again uh the pair like miss san diego i'd moisten the eggs for them because they're not out in that 100%. situation soon you see those eggs getting dark oh you you know roughly she's going to be hatching and and Three or four days. Moisten them. Here Give them a little go. bit of moisture. Pop, pop. Out. Watch your molars. He's yeah. done it before. He's cracked them up. <laughs> well, years ago, I had all my teeth, right? Uh, so <laughs> happened to me a couple okay, times. Getting, pop getting in your back, mouth and your back teeth. So, oh, we're in trouble. You know, that's one method. Another method, as Ryan said, you can put a bath pan out, right, for them. They could have a bath. Um, well, we have an Avery. They go in an Avery so they can get a little bit damp under their feathers that's another way that it happens you could use a, a spray bottle if you'd like there's a lot of different ways to do it that is the way that ryan and richard do it we just wanted to show you that is one option okay well i'm going to get to the comments here because i have a lot of them um uh -oh. Amber Loft, getting back to checking the eggs uh, and for loft he uses a light at five days old as well to check the eggs Henry Rader says, oh, so Terry from the Pioneer is a mommy. The eggs hatched yesterday. Congratulations, Henry and Very Terry. Very good, Henry. Good 
good job. All right. Terry's nice. a mom. I can't wait to I can't wait to see Terry back. Terry. Good good job, Terry. You remember, yeah, Terry. I remember Terry? She hit the wire, but she still she finished all nine well, weeks. Well, so that's well, excellent. <laughs> we'll have to tell the Dietrichs that. I'm sure they'll be uh, they'll be excited to hear they'll that. Love okay. It. Ian has a question for Richard. Okay. Oh, Ian, watch it. I know, I know. I have to look to see what it is. I haven't read it yet. So this I, I'm be, sitting here this, with the tennis racket. <laughs> this, might be, uh, this might be entertaining. Ian says, I got a question for Richard. If I got a cock that I want to put on several hens, but don't have a pair of pumpers when my hen lays, how long can I keep those fresh eggs in a cool, dark area before I free up a pair of pumpers? First of all, I, what's, I, what's a pumper for people who don't know? Well, yeah, people don't know what a pumper is. All right, what's a, you go with the pumper. You're good with it. Ian, uh, what's a pumper? A pumper is someone that Ian knows what it is, but no. other people don't. It's, yeah. it's where you switch the eggs, take the eggs. So you set up a pair of birds that you make them the same time you have the cock. Uh, now, did Ian say he's got one cock that's bullying hens? Or yeah. one pair, right? I mean, he, okay. he wants to switch a pair of eggs, float okay. a pair of eggs. So it's if called got, you, floating, yeah. switching. Yeah. So if you got a pair that you put together that you want to switch the eggs to pumpers, pumpers are going to be foster parents. Yes. So put the pair that's going to lay. Uh, you you want to take the eggs to switch, and have a pair of pumpers, another pair. You put them together at the same time, and it should work out that they drop the eggs at the same time. Now, if for some reason... Can I add to this? Can I just add to this? I always like to put the pumper together a few days after. after. Yes. Okay. Put your main pair together, okay? Main pair you bought or it's a gift or whatever. You pair them up, give them three days head start. Three days? At least for, three, maybe three, four even days. a week. Maybe even a week if you want. Don't be afraid. Put the main pair together a week later, four days, whatever. Put the, the foster pair together. The main pair is going to go down. Hopefully ahead. That's what you want. You need them to be ahead. They drop their eggs. Take them away. Take them away. Don't let them incubate them. Like Ian said, put them in a, in a, in a nice dark, air, a dark area that's cool. Cool. Not in the fridge. Just keep them in a dark, cool area. You know what's good? Every day, every other day, give them a half a turn. Turn them. Yep. Turn them. Turn them. And again, when your foster pair goes down, when they drop their second egg, Put those first take, eggs. Take the foster pair of eggs away. Put both eggs in. Bing, bang, boom. That's done. How long can you keep them? We've had them up to about a month. Uh, and, and the success rate is pretty darn good. I wouldn't be going and saying, hey, the quicker you can get them switched out, the better. I don't know, Ian, how long you've, you've, you've had them go before. I know you had it happen over a month. Well, believe it or not, uh, one time I thought, Breeding season was over, and I thought, I'm going to take these eggs. I didn't want to hatch them. Right. I separated my breeders. Right. Right. But I had race birds. Right. That I wanted to play around with. Motivate. Uh, motivate. With what we call pot eggs or dummy eggs. Plastic eggs, dummy plastic, eggs, whatever. He just eggs. had fresh eggs that he had pulled away. Yeah. I pulled them away, and I had a coffee can. And uh, you had them on the stairs and the going into the basement. Yeah, dark yeah. again. What do we say? A dark, cool spot. They were there for about, and I hate to interrupt you. They were there for about a month and a half, maybe. Right. And he started putting them under the race I pairs. Put under race pairs, so they'd have. I figured they're going to be pot eggs. Eighteen, right? 18 days later in the race season, oh, Ricky's oh, a father all again. Of a, all of a sudden, not all of them. All no. of a sudden, they have that one hatched, and this one hatched, and that one hatched. And I'm going, holy mackerel! They were on the stairs for probably a month or so. Right. So. You can hold them. Uh, you can, uh, you yeah. can hold them. Again, turn them, turn them, moisten them, keep them dark, keep them cool. That's they'll, they'll, they'll last a long time. Take, for example, a chicken or a goose, mm -hmm. a duck. Yes. A duck will lay 12 eggs or a goose, maybe even 16 eggs. She'll drop one egg and then she skips a day and she drops the next egg. Yep. Just like a pigeon, skips a day, drops the next egg. Next, next egg. She doesn't sit on them tight. She might stand over them, or she'll cover them with her feather yep. fluff. But by the time that first egg gets actually started to get sat on, mm -hmm. this could be twenty-four days later. Right. Right. And, and then, but once she starts sitting, 
All those young ones have and, 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 and that doesn't mean exactly what we've said. If you listen to what we're saying, mm -hmm. that duck, goose, whatever, she turns the eggs when she lays the next egg. She puts a little movement on the egg. She puts a little moisture on the egg. She's fluffing the nest around to drop these 12, 16 eggs. She's she's still taking care of those eggs. But yeah, she's moistening. She's moist. Yeah, she's she doing everything. And, and then do you ever notice when those eggs hatch, how quickly do they hatch? They just bang, bang, bang. And a nice thing to see is you look in the nest and you take a look and you see, oh, one egg's just starting to chip. You can see it starting to chip. And you go, okay. God, you walk in the next day. Boom. Bang, two young ones. Together. I, I like same to, I same like, speed. I like to see that. I like to see the vitality in the young one, the, oh. on these young ones, the strength. And they come out. Now, some eggs, you'll see one will chip, and then it'll take, God, a day and a half for the second one to chip out. And not as good. The quality's not as good. Another thing, guys, if you're checking eggs and you have one egg that you see in the nest is good, one egg's not good, leave both eggs in, let it hatch. Leave the other egg in with the baby so the baby doesn't get taken away underneath the mother. Leave the egg because the egg sort of works as, what would you call it? Like a... So what are you saying? The other egg? Barrier? Hatch? People, yeah, a barrier. People sometimes take the one egg away. It's very good to leave the shells in the nest. The mother knows, the hen knows when to take it away. The shell or the, the other egg. What If you have an egg that's no good, it doesn't hatch, and you have a fresh baby... A baby and an egg that doesn't hatch. You always leave the egg. I, I leave that egg Why? in for three or four days because the other egg protects, uh, it acts as a cushion or a protector for the young one that's hatched. To not get sucked off the nest. Yeah, or, or, yeah, or, or crushed. You know, a little, yeah, a little Anything. protection for it. It's like a little cushion for it. And three, four days, we've left it up to a week, so you're roughly getting close to banding. The baby's got its good size. Everything's going on. Out goes and the throw egg. it against a tree and watch it pop. Um, okay, Henry has a question, and he says, say if you're only going two rounds with a pair, would you still take the baby away earlier, or would you leave them a little longer? I would definitely still take the young one away earlier for the simple reason is learn. To learn. 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 Save your pairs and learn. Do you want, Henry, do you want smart? Do you want a baby that... Rides that bike, gets on that bike and starts riding, or do you want something that goes like this? Can you please help me? Can you please help me? Can you please help me? Please, 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 please. They squeak, squeak, squeak. No, get them on the bike, get riding. Yeah, take them away or take them away at that age, and they gotta, they gotta, they're learning how to live. They gotta get on that bicycle and learn to ride. Ride, right? Ride, ride the bike. They want to learn. They do. I mean, again, we talk about it. Have pigeons in a section. And put up a new perch, one perch in that section. And what are the what do all the guys do in the section? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's this? We're all going to go over there because they're interested, they're curious. Pigeons are real smart. I think sometimes us pigeon guys, we're a lot dumber than the pigeons. Well, I'll tell you, I've seen um, I've seen barn plugs, young barn plugs. They're probably five weeks old, and they're already out. Of the of the of the mow in the barn, they're already out in the field with their with the with the old birds. They're already fielding. For sure, yeah, right. They're already out in that well, field. Wait, what, what are they doing? They get busy living. You got to live. Go ahead, Leah. Fire it away. Aaron Burns says the nice, clean, oily shell, glossy shell, see through, see see enough good eggs. Then you can tell without touching. Usually, pay more attention to what stage of development. They are if I do check them for feeders or swapping eggs. Yeah. Well, that's right. Sometimes it happens that you don't, you get a pair of eggs and you say, I want to sw uh, switch these eggs. And you check them through the light and you go, because you know, if you try and switch a pair of eggs, you if you're three days off, you can be in trouble. You're in trouble. And, we, and we've done that as well. Because the foster <laughs> pair... Uh, they, we've done they, it. Yeah, they won't. Uh, we, we, yeah. We've switched eggs. And I'll tell you, sometimes when you plan switching, it doesn't work because it's almost like, what are you doing? Uh, you're counting your chickens before they hatch. So you got to watch with the switching again. Uh, again, I'm going to say I've had pairs that I've had 
put them together the first of March, and by the first of June, I've had four rounds of young ones. Yeah, and, and, and they've raised two. I take them away, the young ones, I take them away at 14, 16 days old. I take the stress off the parents. The young ones are so beautiful. They grow perfectly. The parents show absolutely no sign of stress. Yeah. From pumping, pumping, and pumping. If you don't think it's a lot of work. Uh, well, you know what? If you don't think it's a lot of work, take guess a, what? Take a, young, take, take, a your, take a baby and you hand feed it. Try and feed, <laughs> shove feed in there. And don't and when it wants to eat, don't let it. Just keep hand feeding it until it's 40 days old. You know what? Your fingers are going to be callous. And you know what you're going to say? Holy shit. I always like to see a pair of uh, uh, parents that don't show stress when they're feeding young ones. And again, I've seen it. Uh, we're not going to talk. We're not getting into weaning today. We're talking about eggs, and, and that's fine. A weaning show is going to be a totally different show. Okay. Uh, Lee, so did I, you have... I, yes. So um, Randy Nurple says, if one egg is clear and one egg is fertile, would you contribute that to the hen not sitting right on the first egg or just bad luck? Uh, I think it, um, uh, I mean, if it's super duper cool, usually they sit on them pretty good. You could take the first day again, if it's minus 30 degrees, mark it, put a pot egg underneath her. A lot of work. So, so she, yeah, and mark it. Yeah. So you, you know where it's from. And then once she drops that second egg, take that other one back in. It could be the situation that uh, the usually, usually around the fifth or seventh day before uh, in that 10 day period when he's, uh, you know, when he, not, he treads her, he treads her. It could be by accident, not a fertile egg. Well, he got knocked off. If he got him out with other birds, he didn't quite connect her. And uh, she's got a clear egg. Yeah. Could be that. It could be that. And again, again, when they're, when they're laying in the first, second egg, again, a little bit of light on in your loft, even a bathroom, a small little bathroom light's good to leave on if you want. Hey, you notice most of your hens are humping up. For those two days, they're going to be laying the first and second egg. If you want, leave the lights on. It's okay. That way, if somebody gets off the nest when they're laying the eggs, something, they can find their way back. Again, this is what we say. When the hens are going down, we don't go in and mess around in the loft. I don't bring people in. I don't do anything. Oh, I'm going to tell you, you were in that loft today. Yeah. And I, you usually don't go in there. Right. You go in there once in a blue moon. You went in there today to do this little egg. Yeah. Right. My pigeons know. When I'm in. Yeah. Because. Pigeons know. say it. Pigeons know. Yeah, they pigeons know. know. They hey, know. we <laughs> talked to the breeders. Anna Mee Van Hee. She brought the breeders out. She brought the cockbirds out. The hens were on the nest. She did not interrupt. She didn't interrupt the system. Well, she, you don't bring uh, play around with hens when really right. too much when you know they're going to lay. When you see they're humped, you don't, you don't disturb them. Don't play. If you want to leave the lights on, great. For those couple days, it's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. That way they get to the nests. Don't be taking people in. Don't be running through. The eggs start to go down. You don't have to check them. Back off. Let everybody go down on the eggs and start sitting tight. And then six, seven days in, take an afternoon. Enjoy yourself. Check your eggs. There, that's it. Done. Or don't. Pigeons are pretty darn smart, though, I'll tell you. Years ago, we used to go and, uh, go and catch barn plugs. Yeah. Okay? And the barn, we'd be up in the barn, and there you've got the two ends of the barn where they got that little, like a cross thing cut, yep. cut in the wood. Yep. Not like I not know. a hole like this. Just okay. a cross thing. I, I believe you. And the plugs. Yep. We'd get some plugs, but some plugs were smart, eh? So you go through Nighttime, it. 10 o'clock at night. Yep. They go whoosh, Right, right out the hole. Right. We'd say, oh, that's, he's gone. He's gone. You wait 10 minutes. What did they show the, you? In the dark. What did they show you? Pitch dark. Back in. Back in the hole. Back in the barn. Isn't that smart? They're smart. Very smart. So your pigeons actually know where their box is at night. They, you know, they pretty well. I mean, if you if you go in there with a straight cat, you're going to be in trouble. That's what we're saying. Just be calm when the hens are going down. Um, That's Frank it. Use some has common sense. A question. Um, I have a cock bird that now has sired two hens. One just hatched two, and the second one just laid her two eggs. Should I let it ride or remove the second nest? Let her ride. So what? He's bullying one cock. No, nope, the cock took two hens, dropped the first hen down. Oh, 
they just hatched. The other hen's gone down. I say let it ride. I think the cock probably doesn't over doesn't overly sit too hard. And that first hen, she probably sit the nest real hard. Some of those hens, you've seen it. We've had it. It's it's. I'm not joking to you. We had a cock last year. He just had laid laid eggs with the hen. It wasn't it? They were sitting three or four days. The hen got hit or something happened. Mm -hmm. I never seen this before. Cock sat the eggs, hatched the eggs, and raised, raised the babies. The young ones, right? Yeah, the whole thing. Now I've never seen that before. Never I, seen. I, it. I thought and there's no way mm -hmm. he's going to be able to do this. That he will do it. I thought after you know three or four or five days, going to get off that nest. He sat the nest right out. He fed the young ones right up to They're, a couple weeks old when yep. I took them away. Took them away. Boom! You couldn't believe it, and you you'll see. Sometimes the hen, Frank, probably the hen is sitting real tight and the cock's going, hey, you're not even letting me on. Well, let me ask He's real tight. What does he do? He starts hooking. Well, let me ask uh, Frank something, and I hope Frank, Frank's not going to blush. If you got him on camera, the cock had two hens, Frank. Were you just a little bit jealous? <sighs> okay. <laughs> okay. Leah, you see uh, Ricky, he's on fire. He's throwing seven Rick different kinds of smoke. Uh, hey, Glenn, Frank, that, that, Glenn, that, hey, Frank, that cock's doing something right. Okay. Glenn Thornley says, uh, once had a pigeon hatch a Muscovy duck egg, laid on the egg yeah. extra long, and prevented her from laying again for a while after breeding season, flew strong to that egg. Huh. Interesting. I, 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 right. I seen that happen. I did that when I was a kid with batty eggs. I, <laughs> I put a, I put, just for fun, right? Yeah. I put a, an egg underneath one of my pigeons, but I, I marked the time because a banny will sit. I think right. it's 21 days. Right. And then once it got to 18 days, I switched the egg with another hen right. because I was worried that hen's going to get off the egg, right? right. And it hatched. And then it hatched. That, you know, a little chicken. I'm always learning um, stuff. Aaron, yeah. Burns, Aaron Burns says, you can tell if it's fertile and has died. Good point to mention. So how do you tell if it's been fertile? fertilized but is dead now that is a very good question and uh, really the egg turns black it gets so dark it's unbelievable yeah you'll see the air bubble depends on when it died yeah you'll see the air bubble just get a, a funny grayish blackish color yeah it's like and it looks like a banana or yeah so, sometimes when i look at the egg uh like uh fellas says the one egg will be proper looking mm -hmm. the other egg won't be as dark or whatever as this one and i'll just take the egg and you know i just I give it a little shake like this or put it in the light and i don't see nothing i say this thing's gone no so good you, you give it a little, little bit like this and i can hear it you just hear a slosh around no then good I, no then good I, then i take it and i throw it against the tree <laughs> <laughs> he loves throwing it against a tree Oh. Owen is asking, how can you do two hens on one cock to keep up with the feeding? Two hens with one cock. Well, two hens with one cock. It, again, if that hen is sitting in the nest tight uh, and, and she's almost not letting the cock and the cock's playing and the next thing, bang, he get, pairs up to another hen and they go down. They, they feed together, but that hen or that cock got, got, the, got the strength. They, they do it. They work together and they, they just do it. Uh, you don't get it that often. You don't get it that often. No, you, you really don't. And again, you, you don't have to worry. Again, Frank, write her out. Let's see how she goes. Let us know. A 18 or 20 days, 35 days from now, Frank's going to tell us how they turned out. Um, so what he's question. got an extra hen in there? Frank's got an extra hen in that just, section. And, and Just just let, let the question come through. Okay. We don't have to or, or, overthink right. this. Oops. Okay, I had a question about if in my loft, let's say I have different breeds of pigeons, like I have racing pigeons and I have fantails and then I have some Medinas maybe, um, do we keep them all in the same loft all together or how do you, how do you work that? Because there's lots of guys who have different breeds, right? Not just racing, they have right. racing and then several other types. So... Do you guys put them all together or we have separate sections or how does that work? Well, I think it's a matter of number one choice. Choice okay. and time. Choice. So in other words, if you want, there's over 300 types of pigeons. If you like to see your pigeons mix, and this is what will happen, 
it, it's not going to be good. If you, you raise a fantail and then you got a racing pigeon and they mate up and then you're going to have a pigeon that's going to look, it won't be a fantail, it won't be a racing pigeon. You're going to screw that all up. But maybe some people like that. That's like saying, I went and bought a German Shepherd and uh, I made it to a Chihuahua. A Chihuahua, right. or I, then I went and bought a Bulldog and I made it them together. And uh, so you're you're really ruining the German Shepherd's uh, existence as being a German Shepherd or the Bulldogs. Yeah. Uh, so I would keep them separate de separate sections, 100. percent Separate sections I, are great. And and again, keep keep your race birds with your race birds, your fantails with your fantails, your powders with your powders. Again, you will see in our racing lots, you will see droppers. We have droppers. We have satinets, or we have the powders. We have them in with the race birds. Uh, it's that's a little different. We're not breeding at those times. It's different, but we don't keep our fantails or our powders all mixed. We don't do it. We keep no. everything separate. It, it's much easier, and you can concentrate. Yeah. You can concentrate, and we've had it before. We've had it before. Hey, we're short a hen. We're short a hen. Go grab one of the powder hens or one of the owls. Throw it in there. Give the cock a hen. We goes down on on eggs. We let him, you know, whatever we have to do. But we know we mark it down. Hey, that 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 cock. We're just satisfying the cock, or we're satisfying the hen. We're not in for it for keeping the babies. Well, the uh, the, the eggs you can you can make them pod. Hunters. Pod. No. What I'm saying is you you can you can take those eggs and just lightly hard boil them. Right. And they're dummy eggs. And and put them underneath the pair. Yep. I've used plastic eggs. If you don't fill them with, with pack with, them with mud, yeah, right, they're not good. You put a dummy egg in there, a plastic egg, loose, and those birds know it. Yeah, within about a yep. week, mm -hmm. they're off the nest. And, they, they know and, the things a dummy. And what we're saying is, what's a pot egg, a yeah. dummy egg? You can buy them. Uh, you see some of the pigeon stores. We don't sell them here. A plastic egg, they unscrew. You pack them with clay, put them together. So if your hens are laying eggs and you don't want them. You can put the pot eggs under. The hen will sit 21, 22 days, 19 days. So you don't make the hen keep going down on eggs by taking the eggs away. Another another good little method. Save yourself some money. Your hens go down on eggs. Start the stove up. Boil the eggs. Six, seven minutes. Light boil. Light, hard boil. Light, hard boil. They don't hatch. They're not bang. They're, you're saving yeah. some money on, on a pot egg. That's right. If you, uh, that's the uh, one of the good ways. I mean, if you if you take the eggs and shake them or wow. whatever, or wait, make them go bad. What'll happen is uh, they they get bad inside. No good. And then next thing they get so bad that the hen will sit on them and they'll just blow. Right. They just pop. So right. boil them or put a pot egg in. There you go. Okay, Randy's asking, what would you do if you have one very small squeaker and one that is much larger? Should I try and switch the babies in the nest to match the sizes? Well, when when I see that, uh, I like to see a nice pair of young ones. They come out, and they they you can you you can't uh, really see the cock and the hen between the pair of young ones. And they both grow strong. And if one doesn't grow right, it can't keep up to the other one. There's a flaw. There's something wrong, I think. And sometimes you will see it. You'll see. You'll hatch out, and, and a couple of days will go by, and you go, boy, that one's looking like a runt. We've said it before. Mm -hmm. We don't switch. We don't. You come back in three days, and the, the runty one, all of a sudden, mm -hmm. it picks up and just grows like a weed. But exactly what we're saying uh we don't, I don't, we don't move them around. I, we want to see strength. That's right. And, and the pair laid, the pair hatched. There's, there's a runt. You let it go and, and let it, you know, we, 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 we let them naturally sort of, uh, yeah, they gotta, right. they gotta grow. They, they gotta be strong. I mean, a lot of times when you take that runty young one and switch it, it still doesn't come out. No, nice. it doesn't get no bigger. It's, it, it's still it, a runt. There's something's wrong. Yeah. Um, Mike yeah. Vanderyak, getting back to Frank's point, um, he says, Frank, as an aside, you should never have unmated or extra birds in your breeding section. What do you guys think about that? Uh, yeah, so that was the, the question I was going to ask. I was asking Frank, and then you guys sidetracked me. 
Okay, so uh, I, uh, Frank, I exactly, uh, exactly, exactly Frank, what Mike uh, senses that he's got an extra hen in that section. Yeah, Frank, Frank did answer back and said, yes, okay. turns out I do have an extra hen that got mangled on a toss, has lived on the floor since getting hurt real bad. Um, the 2020 horn dog nailed her as well as his own hen. I'll leave them and we'll let you know. Okay. Yeah, leave them let you know. I mean, you, you should try and keep your pairs, put pa equal pairs in. Something like that happens, it happens. And well, I wouldn't have an extra hen in there. I, I wouldn't have an extra hen in there. Why? Uh, I we've seen it down in that barn in the teepee we had even pairs the one cock he had got himself all in a pickle and said i wasn't into this and one cock paired with two hens they had they had four eggs in the teepee the other cock was not interested and that was it it was one of those things it happens how often does it happen not very so often. what you're saying is uh uh, uh there was equal pairs in there and one hen decided yeah. to leave her cock and go to another one. We had it two years that's ago. You're saying we had it two years ago in right. the teepee. Okay, that can happen. That can happen. Right. That's not a good sign on the hen's part. Oh. I don't like it when a hen decides she's going to leave her cock and go with another cock. Right. Or okay, that's not a good sign. Okay. We're not we're not we're not aiming for that. But it, it can happen. I don't think it's the end all be all. But if a man had an extra hen in the section, then this is what's going to happen, and I wouldn't it can, do that. It can happen. Yeah, it can well, happen, and it did, it did happen. Okay, wait. Is it the end of the world? No, but exactly what right. Mike said. Would you have an extra hand in the okay. section if you can avoid I, it? I agree avoid with you. It. I agree with you. Um, Glenn Thornley said golf balls for dummy eggs have worked well for him, so that's another suggestion. Okay. I never heard, I never heard of that one, but hey, it, it, it's got some weight to it. Sure, maybe. Yeah, good. Golf now, ball might be a little bit bigger. He tried it. He said it works. Yeah. It'd be yeah. interesting to try. We'll find one. We'll try chicken eggs when I was a kid. Chicken eggs. Um, Fanny chickens are a little small. Question about okay. temperature of the loft. And because we're here, obviously we're, we're in Canada and it's uh, getting, it's winter time and it can get very chilly here, like minus 30, which is very cold. Um, heating in the loft. Like can birds freeze kind of thing like do we need heating what are your what's your opinion on that other than the styrofoam idea which we talked about on the, well, the, 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 the pigeon the pigeons are like look at the pigeons on the barn look at the pigeons uh, under the bridges they, they climatize right pigeons climatize so you don't have yeah. to put heat on no and, but, and that, again, but it, didn't that didn't wasn't there a story that we yeah. had about yeah. the birds well, leg freezing well, off or something well here it is if you keep the pigeons in your house where it's nice at 70 degrees, 75 in your house, it's warm, and it's minus 30 outside, and you decide, oh, it's sunny, but it's minus 30. I'm gonna put those pigeons outside in the Avery and let them sit out there for an hour and a half, or two hours, or three hours, or four hours. What's gonna happen to them? You're gonna freeze the legs off because they're not climatized. You kept them at 70, 75. They're not used to it. They don't go like, as the climate goes. I know a man that thought he had to heat his pigeon loft. Mm -hmm. He had it insulated. He had the thing heated. I had a baseboard heaters in there, had the, th had the thing 70 degrees. Mm -hmm. And he put his pigeons out in the fly pen. What yeah. happened? Minus 30. What happened? Beautiful sunny day though. What happened? He brought them in. What the happened? next day, uh, some of them lost their, uh, their legs turned black and they lost their legs fell off from the, uh, their elbow. Uh, right, right down, fell right off. Cross just gone. It just slowly, just uh, uh, everything. It took a few days to have this happen. Right. But it was like, oh my God. You know, he called me up. He said, I got a big problem. I said, oh, there you go. They got frostbite. Frostbite. Right. So, no, don't heat, uh, don't. don't heat your loft up. Keep it dry. Keep it air. Keep it three three sides closed. Okay. I see. The, the two walls. Mm -hmm. In the back, keep it close. You got your roof on and one side open. And you know, guys, another tip, when you're building a pigeon loft, it's great to have your pigeon loft. You see some guys, they have their pigeon lofts off the ground, four feet, five feet, three feet. The air can go underneath. That's great. If you can't get, get it up that high because you've already built it, a nice cinder block, get it up. Get it up one foot and the air moves underneath. It's like with the nest bowls. The nest bowls, you get them up. 
The air can get underneath. Keep everything Keeps dry. It dry. Dry is key. Health, dry. Health, dry, simple. Go ahead, Leah. There you go. <clears throat> Um, uh, do I have any other questions? Let me see here. Uh, with the hens, how many rounds in a row or total should we be in one season? Should we be breeding out of one hen? I like to go maybe maximum four rounds. Four rounds. Four Three rounds. rounds. Four rounds. That's it. And you always see the first round good. Second round, good. The third round, you can start to see a little wear. And it all depends on how you're, you're giving them the, the boost. You're giving them things to keep them going, uh, to keep the vitamins up, to keep give them the egg food, give them the right stuff. You have to keep the gasoline to the breeders. You, just because you think, well, I'm feeding them and, uh, you know, oh, I've, I've got my two rounds. I'm going to have the third round. And you stop paying attention and just focus on the youngsters that you've weaned. The next rounds fall down. You got to wean them again. Wean them early. Uh, 12 to 16 days old. Wean them. Or, 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 That's no. it. Just and give the, give the, give the six, old birds a break. 16 to 20. So you 16 can, you to can 20 get, and wean them. You can, get, you can get at least a nice four rounds. That's pushing it. That's all. That's the max. Right. That's right. It's it's simple, you know. Separating. But again, keep keep giving them the grits, the minerals, the vitamins, some peanuts, some fatty feeds, some protein, some corn, some barley. Give them what they need. Remember, the pigeons in the wild. They go, and they pick what they want. They go to the, to to the where the lake is, and they pick up. Right where the shore is, they pick up the little, the the, right, the, the pond the is, pond is. The river is. you know, they go and they pick the dry millet that's dried over the winter. They pick on that. They're picking grass. They're picking bugs. They pick what they want because they can go and get it. And when you have your stock birds and you want to have maximized top quality, you got to give them what they can't get. And that's that. There we go. Okay, so it looks like uh, no comments or questions. So let's talk a little bit about your Mardi Gras necklaces and what that's all about. And then we'll wrap up because we've almost been on an hour and a half. Okay, well, we've got our, our club bands for the Pioneer Racing Pigeon Club for our local club members, right? Uh, the bands, they made it in. The AU took a little longer than expected. They apologized. That's okay. Sometimes that happens. Again, we have our AU rings. Uh, they're all registered, ready to go. So they're ready to pick up. We'll have Maybe to I'm going to switch to this camera. There. That's better. To me. There yeah. they are there. Beautiful. Good. Nice red. Easy to see. I like the red. Um, just let us know when you need them. I know, Henry, you're going to need them. Uh, I think we talked last week. Mo, they're in. Gerard. Gerard, they're in. So that's good. Leah, do we want to talk about this today or leave it uh that well just say you have them out there so just tell everybody what kind of what it's for pioneer we have a band series coming the pioneer elite series uh it's going to be a very fun band race uh four weeks of good intense young bird racing uh starting at the start of september to the end of september uh these rings here the birds can only race if they have the Pioneer rings. Again, these are AU as well. So you do band a bird, you want to send it to any one lot race or whatever, you know, it's special something. You can still use these. They're, they're official rings. Again, by the AU, they say AU Pioneer on them. That's great. These rings are going to be, we haven't put the advert out. They will be out uh, hopefully by the end of the week. Rings are $15 each. And uh, it will be a four race series. Lots of prize money, lots of fun. Uh, again, basically 250 to 325 miles of racing for young birds, four weeks in a row. Put on by us here, the Pioneer Club. We're going to get into that once we unleash the advertisement. But the red bands are just regular AU bands. They're 75 cents each. Henry's asking if he can come down this week to pick them up. Absolutely, you can. 
They're 75 cents each. We can um, mail them out to you if you need extra bands or whatever. Um, we have them available if anybody needs extra bands. Those are the red bands, not the yellow bands or the gold bands. The gold bands are for a special band race that we will be hosting in September. Yes, we have 2,200 of the golds. We are going to sell them all out. It's going to be a sellout race. It's That's going to be four races. That's for four races, $15 a ring, four race series. It's going to be paid out, not only weekly racing, it's going to be paid out a first, second, and third. We're also going to pay out the first, second, and third champion average speed loft, not points, champion average speed loft. And we're going to pay out the first, the second, and third champion average speed pigeons. So not only on each of the four races are you going to be able to win as just winning a regular race, you're going to be able to win average speed pigeon, average speed loft. And again, we always have our audience here. Um, oh, we got the cats. <laughs> different cat today. But uh, we're going to have uh, this going, which is great. Again, we are going to have pick birds, the pools, everything. Again, all will be run by us here at the Pioneer Club. You know everything will be on Facebook. Uh, we have 2,200 of these, uh, Leah, amazing. We've already sold 400 and we haven't put the advert out. This cat sees us. Oh, this, uh, race One second. She will sell jump. out. I she promise you she's going to jump the camera. And if the cat jumps the camera, the show ends, yeah, but, sure. uh, we're going to get into this at the end of the week. Yeah. We're going to talk more about the gold bands at the end of the week. Um, Owen's asking how much are the four, four week series. They're $15 a band. Um, that's it. but that's not the same as the pioneer one loft race. The, the gold bands are for a separate racing series and which you do, um, you race the birds on your own. We're going to have three shipping locations, hopefully where people can yes. ship their birds. So you don't have to come to the pioneer club if you don't want to. We will have three different shipping locations throughout the greater Toronto area to make it easier for people to ship their birds. As I said, we're going to get into that. So we're going to dedicate an entire show to that band race series once we get the advert finished, which we are working on. Um, I think uh, Glenn asked, do you have boundaries for your club? No, we don't have boundaries. No. This sport... This sport can't survive, doesn't work with boundaries. We need everyone's help. We need everyone to fly. And uh, wherever you're located, you can fly. With us, uh, boundaries, were, uh, no. No boundaries. We're, Owen where are you located? Know, Owen wants to know if there are any locations near him, um, the shipping locations. Uh, i got to think about that. O o Owen, Owen, you're unfortunately Owen up, up where you are, Inglehart. That will be one of the race points again. Uh, the race points if for people wondering, it's going to be Inglehart, Ontario, Matheson, Ontario, uh, and two uh, races from Mount Laurier, uh, Quebec. Uh, so north, a north, and a northeast course. And again, our shipping locations are going to go out is out to the basically the EOC area, Oshawa area, and out to the uh kitchener waterloo area so we're going to have multiple shippings uh we're going to get into that more but, but, but know, i promise but, you. but you know what don't worry owen because you could buy the bands and have somebody closer who is in the race vicinity area fly mm -hmm. them for you so That's what right. do you call them like host lofts or uh foster yeah, lofts? But, yeah so, you know what you owen know, if if you purchase some bands Maybe Henry, Henry Radar, he's in our area. Maybe he wants to fly a couple babies. Gerard Van Dyke maybe wants to fly. Tony Elvis wants to fly. Bill Wemo wants to fly some. There's people that we can get. Is Owen uh, not in the uh, junior uh, 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 pioneer one loft race? Yeah, he can even yeah. throw okay. one on in there. Okay. So he puts, if he's going to buy two purchase, he, can put two he rings. puts two rings on and he can fly. Yep. He can fly the Pioneer against the Pioneer birds. Yep. And then he can also fly against yeah, that's right. the fellas in that's those four right. races. He can have the birds right here. Right here. You can have that's them right, right here so you can watch them. You can see them. And again, we're going to get into that more when the advert comes out. Uh, 
Yeah, you can have, take you, a whole yeah. show. So that's going to take up a whole show, but you can either have a foster loft, fly the birds for you, or Pioneer Entrance can band their entries with those Pioneer bands, and they can compete not only in the Pioneer one loft race, but also in the band race. So you can do it that way as well if you want. Yeah. Yes, and they and, only and need one band. One band per bird. Per That's bird. That's it. That's right. And and again, uh, the Pioneer one loft pigeons will be flying alongside these birds. We all work together. It all goes together. So again, absolutely. If you're going to be participating in the Pioneer Young Bird Race, either in the junior or in the regular, you can ban them with this and already get into another open race where, again, we're going to have over $22,000 in prize money. That's not including pools. That's not including pick birds. I have a feeling that this race will hit around 40000 in prize money for four outstanding race series. It's amazing. It's going to be, it's going to sell out. So basically, now, Mike, you're, Mike you're... Vandriak made a good point that people who have raised babies for the Pioneer should already be banded. Is... Well, they, they can be banded if they're going to be bringing them the week of March 17th. We also have our second date of the week of May. Uh, I believe it's May 7th, 8th, and 9th. Because some people, they live up north, they didn't want to put the birds together. So we made two dates. We made two dates. So if you bring your birds the week of March 17th, and you know what? Hey, one doesn't make it. You can replace it. Or, hey, can replace it in May. You can replace it in May. Or you say, hey, March is too early. I'll bring them in May. I am not worried when we get them. The good pigeons are the good pigeons, and the good pigeons find a way to win. But like Mike said, if you want to have young ones right. coming in March, right? Uh, I'm figuring they should be banded in the next couple weeks. Next couple weeks. Yeah. That's fine. Right? And we got we got time it's okay and you like to have yeah, the we young definitely ones we start. there's definitely time that's why we have two why we have two intake date, dates do not panic if you are entering the pioneer one loft and you your babies are not even at the stage of you know banding or anything don't panic you got time we have two dates we have march that we're going to take birds and may do not panic there's lots of time Right. And, uh, Mike and again, says, Mike says, remember, you wanted them at least six weeks old. So now, Ryan, everything you said is going to come and bite you in the ass. So I guess you better clarify. Hey, it's, you know what? It's OK. We're going to take our time. If you don't get them on, it's OK. You can use your regular bands. It's OK. The AU took their time to mail them. It's OK. It's OK. That's it. So if they it's want okay. to go, if they want to go in this pioneer, they want to go. We're going to find some foster lots. Mike can fly it where he's at. We can find some foster lots. You can have them. You can send a later one. It's okay. Remember, guys, I don't make these. The AU sends them. They come from Belgium. When did we receive these? The other day. The advert will be done by the end of the week. If you want bands now. Without the rules and everything, we have it. We're getting it printed out so it looks proper. It's understandable. If you want them now, we can send them. They're fifteen dollars a ring, and that gives you four races. Four races. Four races. Four. Inglehart, Matheson, Mont Laurier, Mont Laurier. Four shots. Four weeks of racing. And you know what else we're going to add? If you want to bring them for any any of the other first four races to just put them on the truck it's absolutely free isn't that something imagine if go. you raised 50 youngsters you mm -hmm. can fly them all for free <laughs> we're giving it away we're going to as i said talk about the band race end of the week dedicate an entire show to the band race um but the regular red au bands if anybody needs them they're 75 cents each we don't have a problem selling them. We'll mail them out to you if you need. It's not a problem. Um, okay. We've got to do uh, uh, later on. We'll do a little thing about banding. Yeah, we're going to do that. Well, some guys. We, we, yeah, we're going to do a show about how to band youngsters as well. Rodrigo just tuned in and he's asking about the bands, what's going on. He's wondering what that's all about because I believe he is going to send um, entries for the. One loft. I, I guess he's curious about that. So 
Um, double, sure. double them over. Put them into a, put them into another open that we have here that we're running alongside with the Pioneer One One Loft birds. They can fly with the Pioneer One Lofts in the Pioneer One Loft. Uh, we're gonna get to this at the end of the week or middle to the end of the week. What's today? Monday. Yeah, today's Let's Monday. So we will we will set up a show or to talk all about this band series. Um, maybe third, uh, not Thursday because we have the Roth show, but maybe. I don't know. We'll look at the schedule, and sometime this week we will have a show which we will concentrate only on this band race, so we don't confuse everybody. Can yeah, the same for... can the same bird race the one loft race and band race? Robbie's asking. Yes. Yes, Robbie. The yes. yes. If you're sending yes. pi- birds for the Pioneer one loft, they can be banded with the gold bands, and they can compete in both series. They're gonna they're gonna fly right alongside. They get released together. They will fly together. They will get the results. Yes. These these birds will be trained the same way as the one loft birds. They're gonna these be in the bird, one loft these, race. These birds they're will, the will be flying the the sprint right. programs. They'll be flying they're, from start to finish. They're gonna be in the one loft, but they're gonna have the pioneer ring. So That's when right. the when the pioneer race series the 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 band race series is on, yeah. they will just automatically roll into it. Yeah, that's right. So don't okay. worry, there's no extra races. You just... So I just, no, I've got more questions about the band, so I'm just going to keep going here. Sorry, guys. All um, right. Uh, Owen's asking, can the bird in the Pioneer race race in the four-week race as well? Yes, Owen. It can race in both series, the One Loft series and the four-week series. It can race and fly and win in both. It just has to have the gold, the gold Pioneer band. Okay, yep, that's right. Just Chris that. Marshman is asking, could you nominate bands of birds already banded if you paid the same amount as your gold bands? So I think what she's saying is if she has youngsters that have been banded already and she, there's no time to put those bands on, can you buy those mm-hmm. bands and then nominate her own bands? Uh, that might get complicated, no. right? It, it, it might get complicated. We might get people getting into a twist um, you know what? For this year, we're just going to leave it as this. The AU didn't get them out quick enough. My apologies. Because we, literally, uh, we ordered it. them like what, what, six months ago. When did we order them? I feel like we ordered uh, yeah, them I, last, I, I time ordered, or last oh, year. Oh, oh, I, ordered, I ordered them in March. Paid for yeah. them in March. Uh, and and de- December 20, uh, 21st, I went to my U.S. address in Buffalo, New York. Uh, and the AU said, we sent them out. I said, where's the address? said, oh, we didn't send them to your New York address. We sent them to your Canadian address. They said it was their mistake, and coming through customs, they got held up. They got held up, and you know what? So this is going to be the rule starting today. If you want these bands, let's go for the Pioneer One Loft. If you're putting them in the Pioneer, order them now. We get them shipped out. You can go to the post office tomorrow and start mailing. Right? Okay. We're ready to mail. We're ready they're, to roll. They're they're fifteen dollars a band. Um, we're po- we'll post more information in the next coming days. I'm working on the advert. Uh, Rodrigo's asking, how can I get them? We can send them out to you. Uh, Rodrigo is in the United States, Ryan. So I, uh, when are your Ooh. babies ready to band? Because, Ryan, you're going beginning of February, right? Back over there? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have to work that out. He we wants to work, send these will, to the Pioneer will, race, right? Yeah, because he's sending entrance for the Pioneer, and he's from the States right. and wants to probably compete in both. So we're going to have to – I mean, I could probably purulate them. Uh, let me work on that. Rodrigo will work on that for you. Uh, Neil says, my Pioneer birds are already banded. Good job, Neil. Good job. Hey, don't Good. worry. You could uh, – band some more youngsters with the pioneer bands and get somebody from here to fly them for you a foster loft. There, there's lot there, there's lots of lofts i mean if you look at from the eoc the oshawa trailer you've got the niagara trailer the wellington the guys in wellington waterloo guelph uh, oshawa aurelia uh toronto there is two or three hundred guys racing pigeons so there's not going to be a problem of finding foster lofts and you can spread it out Again, look at the release points, uh, Englehart, Matheson, and Mont Laurier, uh, and the spread is going to be wide. Like I said, we're going to have shipping in the uh, Kitchener, Guelph area, Waterloo area, and again, out the EOC, uh, Oshawa area, we're going to have shipping, and we're going to have a central shipping. At the Pioneer, so, at the Pioneer yeah. Clubhouse, we will have shipping on Thursday nights for this, this racing series. 
Um, yes. Owen is asking, is there a minimum number you have to buy? No, you can buy one nope. or you can buy, you can band your entire team. You we can, had a guy. Yeah, you can, just, however many you want. Just, you can buy 50, you can buy 100. We, the, it, it, guys, again, or, the birds win on a, can, average Or speed. you can buy one. There is no minimum. Yep. There is no maximum. You can, whatever you want to do, you can do. Is it the right. same locations as last year for the Pioneer One Loft race? Uh, yep. It is well, the, the same well, race stations. Is it the same race stations? We're doing some things a little differently this year with the Pioneer, right? The One Loft. Yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna to be, we're, go again, ahead, again, things. again, the birds are going to be going up at the combines or different combines. Uh we're again, we're going to have, you know, uh, the first four weeks, we go up with the different combines, the up north or the, the EOC or the Oshawa. We'll be releasing with them. And then when we get to the next four sets of races or, or, or the last four of the season, Inglehart, uh, the Mont Lauriers, if they're trailers that are up there, we will release with them. If not, those groups of birds will all go up together. So the Pioneer. One loft birds will go up with the pioneer band race birds. It all goes together. And again, everything is on Facebook. Everything you're going to be able to follow. You're going to be following the releases, watering, feeding. Again, these banded birds will always be shipped on a Thursday afternoon, anywhere from two in the afternoon till midnight. That will be Thursday starting the first Thursday in September, I believe, uh, that's September 2nd, and the last shipping night is uh, you're, September, you're on. Se yeah, September 23rd. Oh. Um, Neil's asking, are they not eligible now for this new series? Uh, if you can get the bands on them, on the one loft participants, you said you already had them banded. So the the band they're they're absolutely eligible if you can get the band on them right like it, you, right it's a band race so it's separate from the pioneer one loft series but you can combine them if you want right that's right that's that's right and and again my apologies they didn't send me the rings quick enough right so unfortunately if you have some of them banned, it's gonna is it gonna hurt sure but there's lots of guys that can take the birds. And again, you may, Neil, I don't know how many you're putting in. Maybe you're putting in two or three birds. Maybe you want to get a couple extra, get, get two or three or four or whatever, band your next round of babies. Hey, heaven forbid your one loft birds come in. There's a problem with one. You got to bring a replacement. You got a pioneer band. And if you don't have any replacements with excellent job, you can probably find someone that will fly the race for you. I'm sure there's lo loads of people that will fly do foster yes and R rodrigo R R R R rodrigo is asking um they are they au bands yes they are au bands yes. the pioneer those gold pioneer elite bands are au the red bands are au they're from the american racing pigeon union yes that's right they're all registered everything is good to go and again richard will be handling some birds for people uh as well he's going to be a handler you you, you don't yeah, mind handling right. some no. birds uh, so again, uh, if you do, Neil, your Pioneer birds come in and oops, they, you, we couldn't get these in time to you. Richard will handle birds. He's going to be handling birds for a few people already. Um, and it, they can be put on your, they can be put on your replacement birds. If you have any, like Troy says, um, there's a May intake date as well. So it's not too late. Don't panic. No. Don't feel like you're missing out on something we'll make this work don't worry I, I think you have on there the birds should be to come in the pioneer okay. your advertisement said they should be 50 days old but if they're 42 days old they're six weeks old that's right but uh, that's perfect again, again guys there's exceptions to rules we, we're just you know it's exception don't bring birds i'm just saying don't bring birds that are that are 19 days old help yourself out a bit watch the cat please mm -hmm. Uh, and that is live camera, guys. But no, um, it's going to okay. be a good series. It's going to so be fun. Mark Bombach says, I just logged on, Leah. Will you post uh, the replay of this live video? Mark, don't panic if you missed it. We only just started briefly talking about this band race just because Ryan had the bands there. 
the show is really all about um, eggs and breeding. Uh, you can always, guys, catch the rebroadcast of our show on our Facebook page. If you just scroll down um, once the show has ended, you're going to see it. You can watch the rebroadcast. I also upload all of these shows to our YouTube channel. It's Feathers Elite Pigeon Auctions. I've created a playlist for these breeding live pigeon chat videos. I've created a playlist on our Feathers Elite channel that you can go and check them out there. But yeah, not to worry. Once we finish these live broadcasts, if you miss them, you can always catch the rebroadcast. And we are going to dedicate an entire show um, later on this week to this Pioneer Elite Band Race that we are hosting in September. So don't worry, it didn't. And, we and were just the, and the great, briefly talking about it. You didn't miss a yeah. whole lot. And the great thing is it's not a one race and done. It's a series. It's four races. Uh, I'm sick and tired of flying in open races where, oops, I spent all my money on, on bands or on bonds or whatever, and the bloody wind's the wrong way. I have no shot. All I was was a donator. And you know what? I'm done with donating. I want to see pigeon men. I don't want to see pigeon men race pigeons multiple weeks. Let's see who can climb to the top again. This is basically a lot of based on average speed loft, average speed pigeon, and in each race we pay a first, a second, and a third. There will be over twenty-two thousand dollars in prize money. We are going to have pick birds, pools. You're going to be looking at close to forty thousand dollars in prize money for four race series. It's going to be good. And and you fly your own birds, you know, like you fly them. You fly your own birds. This isn't. Yeah, you're the master of your own domain here, right? Let's see what you, yeah. your loft's got what it you, takes, right? And, and again, if you're an outsider, you're in Calgary, you're in the States, you want to send birds up to handlers, we can help you find handlers. If you are in our local area, you want to be a handler, let us know. Help, let us know. Take birds in. Remember, if you are going to take birds in and be a handler, uh, give it your best, you know? Try. Um, Mark is asking it. what the cost of it is for the four weeks. It is fifteen dollars per band. Show the bands again, there, Ryan. The fifteen dollars per ring. I will Fif take one 15, out of the pack. Fifteen dollars per band, and that gets you into four week race series. Yes. Nobody has picked up the bands yet. I have. We're going to start sending them out again. There you go. Simple. Oh, let's see here. You see the AU? Oh, AU Pioneer. Big long numbers too, Leah. Nice, nice for remembering. Again, we are going to have weekly results. Uh, so it will be done exactly like a club and a combine. So you guys are going to know where you sit, where the champion birds are, the champion lofts are. Payouts, again, simple e-transfer, cash, no problems. Um, and, and if you buy 20 bands or more, we're going to throw in a handy-dandy band holder for free. Band, yeah. Yeah, go get the band well, holder. Leah, what's a, what's a band holder? Someone's what's going to ask. Holder? I I, again, ask, look at what the hell is a band holder. Look at this. Isn't this, a, this just makes me cringe. That's Mardi Gras. That's Mardi Gras. That, this thing here, by the time you're done, you're going to get, you get yourself tied up. I know one time I got into something like this. Actually, it wasn't me. It was Ricky. He was tied up for the whole weekend. Band holders. You buy 20 or more, you're going to get a nice band holder. Hold your bands on. It's aerodynamic. It fits in your pocket. You can put marker rings, electronic rings. You know what? You can put your wife's. Wedding rings on here, earrings, it holds everything. It holds 60 bands, 60 rings. Right. Okay, you're going to get one of these. That's how so, it's going to be. You can mount it on the wall in your loft. You can mount it here in your loft mount on it, the wall. Goes in your pocket. Again, check out our uh, Pigeon Boss vests. These work great with the vests. So, yes, if you buy more, 20 or more bands, 20 or more bands, you get the band holder for free. You, you can put this on the wall if you want to keep it in the loft. There you go. You want to get some bands off? There Move you it go. over. They work, Move it over. Right? That, I can't see. There you go. There. Put right. it on the wall. Like you said, bands come on, bands come off. It has a lock. It fits in your pocket. Mounts to the wall. Goes in your pocket. Whatever you're looking for. 
There you go. So we are very super excited about not only the Pioneer One Lock race, but also this new innovative four week racing series in September. We're hoping to get everybody's involvement. It's going to be a really fun, really great series. As always, we will do everything on Facebook, live releases on Facebook, shipping night on Facebook, you name it, you're going to see it. We're looking to make pigeon racing great again in this country. And with your guys' help, we're going to make that happen. We're going to wrap up this show. Thank you guys so much for all of the comments and uh, the questions. We really do appreciate it. I think that's it, Ryan. Let's wrap this up. All right, guys. Uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks for your support. Thanks for all the great questions. Till next time. Yeah, message us about the bands, either the Pioneers or just the regular AUs. We will uh, help you out, get them out to you as soon as we can. Again, advertising will be out by the end of the week, and away we go. Uh, that's Leah. That's Richard, and I'm Ryan. Thanks for flying with us, guys. Have a good one, folks. Have a good evening.